What was that large derelict hoop we passed earlier? The question roused the old Vivectian from his meal. Looking up from his tray, he sees the curious face of his charge. In Vivectian tradition, once a young Vivect reaches their late juvenile age, they are entrusted to an older Vivect to help guide them into their adulthood. You mean the old stability gate, young one? The younger quickly shot back. I'm not a young one anymore. If you weren't, you would be able to tell me the purpose and story behind those gates, the older remarked. He then sat back in his chair and peered out the viewport and began again. That old hoop, as you put it, was an old method of FTL travel called GAT. Short for Gate Assisted Tunneling Transport, ships would have to pass through those in order to get from star system to star system. The older slumped forward, leaning on the table. Back before your egg was even laid, technology wasn't developed enough to allow a large enough worm tunnel to exist that could give passage to vessels. Though you could get one to form, its diameter wouldn't be much larger than this cup here. The older gestured to the cup of water next to his clawed hand. But that was enough to get some construction drones through to begin work on the larger step-up gate. That sounds ridiculously expensive, Younger interjected. It was, hell. Most of the time it took an entire planetary government sponsoring the construction just to get one travel lane built. The older let out a sigh before continuing on. But that is where Galactic Transit would come in. They were a group of free companies that would offer to build these gates at a fraction of the cost it would take to build them yourself. Wait, would they not go out of business doing that? The younger interrupted. And that right there is why you were not entrusted to a merchant. They didn't make money off of building the gates, they made money from charging tolls to use the gates. The older sat up and gave his charge a mocking look. And because they had no competition, they could charge huge amounts of credits on their tolls. I thought you said there were three of these companies. Would they not compete against each other? The younger interrupted again. Don't be fooled. Just because they pretended that they were separate companies doesn't mean they were not cooperating with one another. Each of these company CEOs belonged to the same family, so they were essentially all one company. The older gave his charge a judgmental look. Now, where was I? Alright, so they made lots of money off of charging toll, but what they made even more money from was all that extra stuff they offered. At this, the older sat forward and began gesturing with his arms. You see, since pretty much every ship had to pass through these gates to get where they were going, and the gates themselves could only handle so many vessels at a time, large waiting lists formed. And let's say you needed to make a delivery sooner than your position on the list, well, you could pay for preferred service and bump your spot on the list. Since there was no other alternative, your only options were to pay the bump fee or lose money from late delivery. The younger piped up. Shouldn't the intergalactic governments have done something to prevent this? The older sighed again. You would think, but no. At that time, the governments were not as smart as they are today. See, they fell for Galactic Trans's trick that they were separate companies. How they pulled it off was when a local system government wanted a travel lane built, the three companies would each put up an offer to build the lane. However, what the local government didn't know was that the companies had already decided which company would give the cheapest offer. This gave the illusion that the companies were competing with one another while they got to set up their trap. The younger gave an inquisitive look. Trap? The older gazed back at his charge. Yes, trap. Once they had built and controlled all the largest trade lanes, they all at once drastically increased the prices of their tolls. Why did no one declare war and fight them? The younger, clearly getting a rage at the extortion, clenched his fists and sat up. Oh, they did, but it never lasted long. Because of the trade lanes, the federations, empires, what have you, they were strong enough to fight back and become too big to sustain themselves without trade. So if any of them tried to do something about the monopoly, Galactic Transit would just cut off their gates and let them starve for a bit. Still, someone should have stood up against them. The younger sounded disheartened. Well, a few conglomerates that were close enough did band together to try to develop their own FTL tech. But between the governments corrupted by Galactic Transit and all the mercenary fleets they hired, they were quickly squashed out. But something must have happened. I mean, Galactic Transit isn't around today, so they must have failed somehow. The hopeful voice of his charge touched the off effect. He wouldn't let him know that, though. Well, in the deep, in the frontier space to the Galactic East, 
one species attempted to make contact with a larger galactic community. Now, normally Galactic Transit would jump at the opportunity to rope another poor sucker into their little scheme, but this civilization was way far out of the way. This, and there was a lot of turbulent space between them and the main trade hubs. Because of this, it would take thousands of cycles for them to make back the investment of building a trade link out there, so they didn't bother. The older leaned forward and spoke softly. Little did they know that this species was about to do something never thought possible. Did they make the journey at sublife speeds with an armada and lay waste to galactic transit? The younger sounded eager, practically lusting for the retribution on galactic transit. Not with an armada, but they did make the journey. At first it was just representative vessels, with a few trading ships intermixed within. They were given the standard welcome to the galactic community, greeting by the Poppy Galactic Committee. You know, don't overly pick on weaker races, don't get on the Telepharine's bad side, never make any deals with the Del Everin unless you want a knife in your back. Common sense stuff. You mean to say they just walked right into Galactic Transit's territory without them taking notice? The younger said dubiously. The older once again leaned onto the table and sighed. Galactic Transit was only concerned with making money and ensuring no one could band together to oust them. A fledgling race coming into their corner of the galaxy was of no concern to them. Besides, if they posed a threat, Galactic Transit would just leverage his influence and bring however much of the community to war as it wanted. That, or just hire a mercenary fleet. Well, what did this race do that was so great then? prodded the younger. They invented a new method of FTL, the older stated calmly. The younger at first looked confused before his face shifted to one of realization. Oh, they must have invented the current method of FTL, self-sustained tunneling transport and spread it to the other governments. The older gave his charge a look of satisfaction. Ah, so there is a brain in there. He let out sounds equivalent to his race's chuckling. His charge did not reciprocate. An intelligent answer, but incorrect. But if that wasn't the method they invented, who made it? The younger asked, once again confused. Well, the current method of FTL was made by Galactic Transit. The older stated matter-of-factly. What? This only deepened the younger's confusion. Why would they make a method of FTL that would undermine their monopoly? I only said they made it. I never said they gave the tech to the rest of the community, answered the older. They only use it for themselves and for any governments or VIPs willing to be their puppets. You didn't think they would wait in their own lines they made, did you? Well, no, but I just... The younger shrank back in his seat. Wait, that still doesn't explain what that other species made. What was their FDL method? The younger deflected from his own faulty conclusion. Well... We don't know, the older mused. Something about preventing the proliferation of potentially dangerous tech or some such. The older paused momentarily before continuing. Doesn't really matter since they now mostly use the current method anyways. The only time they ever use their own method anymore is exploration into frontier space. Apparently the current method is much more reliable when you know where you want to go. Okay, so how does any of that have to do with Galactic Transit's downfall? The younger interjected, clearly trying to get to the point. Well, they were nice, and with their FTO tech were able to give traders a taxi to where they wanted to go. They only ever charged just a little bit above energy costs, which was fractions of what you would have to pay Galactic Transit. Once they started doing that, Galactic Transit began slowly losing power and influence, and finally, in a bid to avoid total collapse, began selling their new FTO tech they hoarded for so long. That's it? They didn't pay for all the suffering they caused? With this, the younger stood up, smashing his clenched claws on the table. Settle down, soothed the older. Don't be such a hot blood. I'm kidding with you. You think a corporation as big and powerful as Galactic Transit would lose its grip without a fight? The newcomers did offer taxi services to trading ships, but soon after Galactic Transit took notice of their shrinking bottom line, this prompted them to order their security teams and mercenary ships to attack any of the new species ships on sight. So there was a war then. The younger sat back down, more pleased in the direction of the story. Of a sort. This new species did not fight back, only fled when they were attacked. Thanks to their little understood FTR method, they could always get away relatively unharmed, sometimes still managing to get their piggybackers where they wanted to go in the process. The younger's plumage began to bristle again, and he opened his mouth to speak, but the older raised his clawed hand, stopping him 
from interrupting again. This did not last long though. Eventually the species government sent a message saying, cease your aggression or declare war, to the Galactic Transit head office. Transit responded with a declaration of war. Finally, the younger sat back in his chair with an expression of relief. What happened next? Please tell me that species brought their armada and rained hellfire upon that den of corruption. The older gave his charge a look that could only be described as excrement eating grin. Oh, they rained hellfire all right. That war was the most costly and bloody war this galaxy has ever seen, and it's a shame they don't teach it to you all in your youth. Focusing too much on career categorization and making sure each of us ends up in the right profession based on personality, not enough learning about the universe around us. Back to the story, old one, pestered the younger, prompting a huff from the older. Watch your speech, young one. Now where was I? Okay, so at this point Galactic Transit began a massive hiring campaign of as many mercenary fleets as they could. They then surrounded their main citadel station that served as their headquarters in a massive defensive grid because they knew that their enemy could just come for it directly. Without a need to use the gates, Transit lost their ability to bottleneck their opponents. In light of this, Galactic Transit sought to make their most vulnerable and valuable asset impossible to assail. They also fortified their most profitable gates to ensure their opponents didn't try to attack them momentarily. Why not use the fleets of the governments that they subjugated? The younger pointed out. They did, but only sparingly for two reasons, the older explained. First was if their opponent was indeed powerful, the potential losses of the fleets in various governments could cause their economies to collapse. If the war became more costly than they thought, they could just charge more for tolls to make up the loss. Not possible if the economies that support them are in ruins. Second was that a few of the various governments had begun to establish friendly relationships with the newcomers, so betrayal was a possibility. Okay, so did the newcomers employ some grand strategy to undermine Transit's influence? It would seem like their best option would be to use their friendly relations with the subjugated governments to form a massive fleet, then use the FTL to move the fleet to the Citadel to engage in battle with superior numbers. The older one, again, gave his charge a look of satisfaction. Well now, looks like those combat simulations are worth something after all. That right there was the worst case scenario that Galactic Transit came up with. They were actually so afraid that this would happen, that they offered generous discounts to any government who would turn down and attack the newcomers of their own volition. The older paused again. But this is not what they did. Instead they sent one messenger ship to the Citadel relaying a warning. To all non-combatants and those who wish not to fight, leave now and we will halt our attack until you are out of harm's way. The younger leaned back in his seat, stating, Given how much mercenaries are paid, I doubt any one of them heeded that warning. The older mused. Well, a few of them did, and there were some civilian vessels that cleared out, but the mercenary ships that abandoned didn't make it very far. From what I heard, even some of the civilian ships may have been attacked as well. Anyways, the older continued. The messenger vessel was destroyed after its warning repeated a few times, and then the battle began. The younger leaned forward, finally hearing the words he had been waiting for since the story began. The older noticed his charge's anticipation, and decided not to keep him waiting any longer. Like with any battle, there is the incessant anxiety, the looming question of when. This did not last long with this battle. In fact, the battle itself did not last long at all. The younger cocked his head to the side. The citadel just exploded. Suddenly, without warning, the explosion was so large and so violent that 60% of the defending fleet was caught up in the blast and destroyed. What remained was either ripped apart from the force of the shockwave, or shredded by shrapnel made by their allies behind them. Only a small fraction of the mercenary ships survived the attack, and they surrendered immediately. The younger seemed astonished at what he had heard. Did they plant spies aboard the Citadel? Not possible. Transit was quite thorough in their counterintelligence. Was there some long-range rail cannon using stealth? Also wrong. The defective shields would have easily been able to handle that kind of attack. Some targeted signal disruptor that compromised critical subsystems in the Citadel? Oh please, they would have had top of the line system security, not to mention redundant backups and failsafes. Even if they bypassed all that, there would still have been some warning before destruction. Okay, so what did they use then? The younger finally gave up on this insufferable guessing game. Well, in truth, we don't really know. 
The older sat back, folding his arms. We have some idea, but nothing has ever been confirmed. The older's expression showed hints of his own frustration with the ending of the tale. I will say the last time I got to speak with one of their species about their battle, all they said was that the Citadel got to see what happens when half of it is enclosed in a war bubble, and the other half is not. Both vivisectians sat in silence for a time, before the younger spoke up. You never told me what that species was. The older responded, Oh, it was the Gat Collective. The younger looked downwards upon getting his answer. Huh, I didn't think that they were that capable. The older again made the chuckling sound. You gallible hatchling, do you really think the Gak would do anything for anyone else without a knife at their back or a laser at their head? After the older, chuckling died down, and the younger had sunk deep into his chair, the older spoke again. It was the Human Republic. Wow, okay, I guess that makes sense. Still though, destroying an entire Citadel station without losing a single ship just sounds impossible. The younger seemed satisfied with his answer this time. Well, at least one of those two endings certainly happened. I was still on Colony Wells Sifri 2 when all that happened, so I'm not entirely sure which is true. The older turned his gaze from his charge, the beginnings of his excrement-eating grin expression formed on his face. His charge's hair snapped to him, expressing an emotion that could only be described as, Are you kidding me? If you want to know for sure, I think there is a human working in the med bay. You should go and ask them. With that, the younger Vivek rose from the table and left his mentor, who knew full well that there were no humans on board this ship. He was just satisfied he could get back to his meal in peace and quiet.